Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I have some scriptures I want to read to you. I was led to, well, I was talking to the Lord, and um, I can't. I was talking to him about this one scripture. Let me find it. It's in Matthew 5. About, um, I said it the other day about, um, you don't, about being the light of the world, you don't set your um, light a lamp and put it under a basket and talking about letting your light so shine before men. And I said, I gotta look that up. I, I can't remember how exactly it's worded. So I just put in the Google search, let your light so shine before men and it pulled it up. And, and sure enough, it does say what I thought, um, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Well, I was thinking, okay, Matthew 5 is like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's the first gospel that, you know, people come to when they go to read the New Testament. And it truly was the first book of the Bible I ever read. And... This chapter will help you. Here's here's long story short. I guess you could say is I'm um, talking to the Lord that well today's the twentieth and at four o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. That's my time. It's going to be midnight in Israel, and of course I'm hoping the midnight cry goes out. You know, like in the parable of the ten virgins at the midnight cry. At midnight, a cry rang out. The groom is coming. The groom is coming. Well, how much do we hope? You know, it's our blessed hope. We have all these reasons to believe it could be the 21st or IR 217. And there's been several videos put out. And if you haven't seen one, let me know if, if I see your comment, I'll point you to one. Um, or you can just type in videos about May 21st. Okay, so see, it's going to turn the 21st or IR 17 at 4 p.m. My time in Israel. It'll be midnight because they're eight hours ahead of us here. So if you're Eastern time, it would be five and so on. I know the Lord says no man knows the day or the hour. And it even talks about for you know not if he comes in the second watch or the third watch or the fourth watch. So he's telling us it may not be the first watch or the second watch, or the third watch. Those are watches in the night. I, I think they go from 9 to midnight, midnight to 3, 3 to 6. I, I'm not sure. Somebody put it in the comments if you know what the hours are for the watches that that scripture's talking about. When are the watches through the night? All right, so anyway, I'm feeling led to read this to you because it covers a lot of things that there may be one thing in here that you might need to repent of, okay? Let's make sure our slates are clean and our lamps are burning bright and you're asking the Lord to fill my vessel full of oil, Lord. I want to be found full of oil, okay? All right, it starts off, it's called the Sermon on the Mount, or the Beatitudes. Y'all read it? Let's go over it. Make sure we're not found lacking in any of these areas, okay? All right, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, I have to tell y'all, this one always threw me for a loop. I would read it, and I would say, what does that mean? Poor in spirit. That sounds to me like you're lacking in the Holy Spirit. Your vessel's not full. But the footnote says, those who are not spiritually arrogant. Now, I know the footnotes come from men's opinions or maybe they come from a lexicon. It's a Bible dictionary of sorts. Um, but let's see. The one at the beginning before the word blessed says fortunate or prosperous and so through verse 11. So blessed means fortunate or prosperous are those are the poor in spirit, which means who are not spiritually arrogant. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, that makes more sense than just saying poor in spirit. Because to me, that's saying you're lacking in the spirit. But I'll move on. I wanted to get, I'm glad that's the very first one. Get it out of the way. And if any of you have a good explanation other than that, please leave it in the comments. We don't want to be found lacking in the spirit, Holy Spirit, in our vessels. Whoops. I can kill that. I already took my meds. In fact, I'll turn this thing off. All right. All right, let's move on. Matthew 5, verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So if you're mourning right now, know that you will be comforted. And I pray for comforting angels to surround you right now already. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. The footnote for gentle says humble or meek. Humble or meek. And this is the NASB, by the way, if you didn't know. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Boy, isn't that all of us? Hungering and thirsting for righteousness? We want to see justice done? Oh, I'm so tired of the evil of this world and the way people are treated. The justice system, at least in this country, is not what it ought to be. But this is talking about hungering and thirsting for righteousness. But that's wanting the right thing to be done. Among other things, you want to see people holy and righteous. And you just see evil all around. Yeah, we're sick of it. But we shall be satisfied. Verse 7. Blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. So if you've been good to extend mercy to others, you will receive mercy also. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Excuse me. 
that's how it's worded. It sounds incomplete, doesn't it? Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. That's how it's worded. Disciples and the world. This is the title of the next section. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Huh. So if we are Christians, and we are the salt of the earth, but we turn away, start following the world, and become tasteless, we lose our saltiness, how can we be made salty again? Or how it says the footnote, how will it be made salty again? Well, I know that Jesus will forgive us if you repent. He will forgive you and he will take you back. But this again shows that you can walk away from him and you won't be salty. If you go back into the ways of the world and your friends know, well, I thought he was such a good Christian. He used to not ever join us in, in the bars and now here he is getting all looped up with the rest of us. Yeah, I knew that wasn't for real. He just didn't have it in him. Well, you know, and then you go to work the next Monday and, and say something. They're not going to take you serious until they start seeing your behavior change back to how it's supposed to be on a regular basis. Daily walk, remember? You just repent. You repent and ask the Lord to make you salty again. Okay? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Now that's what the, this says. You're no longer good for anything if you're not salty. But we know that the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And then... After the Antichrist arrives, it will be taking the mark of the beast also. But that came along. That's for the later generation. That's for this generation, not for the last 2,000 years. Okay, Matthew 5.14 says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on the lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house <coughs> buddy buddy they're not here buddy stop barking <coughs> he's in a tether because of whatever's going on across the hall let your light shine before men in s I don't know what's going on. Something's going on over there. She must have fallen again or something. Buddy, come here and lay down. They're just taking care of our neighbor, okay? Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish but to fulfill. 
For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. And when was it accomplished? When he died. And he said to Telestai, the debt is paid in full. He accomplished the law. That's my opinion. It does not mean Jesus paid for all our sins. And once you accept him, you receive the gift of grace and your sins are forgiven past, present and future. He made the provision for all sins to be forgiven. He died so we wouldn't have to. It doesn't mean we don't ever have to repent again. Don't abuse the gift of grace. I'll move on. I don't know what's going on over there, but it sure is a bunch of folks. Whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. So if you want to say, see there, the Lord's telling us we have to keep his commandments. But see what y'all, what, I don't want to say y'all, a lot of people don't realize is there was more than 10 commandments that they were given. It was hundreds. And It had a lot more to do with just the basic Ten Commandments. Like, you had to have your sons circumcised. You, if you caught someone in the act of adultery, you were supposed to stone them. But what did Jesus do when somebody was brought to him who had been caught in the act of adultery? That was part of the law. They were to be stoned, but he changed things. He brought grace and mercy and forgiveness into the lives of the Jewish people. That's what I'm trying to teach you, that he, he didn't come to do away with it because the law points us to sin. The law, when you read it, it says, Wow, that was sure a lot of things they had to do. Praise the Lord, he died so we don't have to. They had to kill a lamb so big for uh, your family and you had to burn it all by the next day or something. I, I don't know all the laws. There's too many. I couldn't remember them. You had all those... Uh, feast day laws you had all the civil laws you had all the dietary laws how many of you eat pork do you eat bacon you ever eat pork chops well see back then that was a law you couldn't eat that let's move on all right For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Wait, let's go over that again. For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. I didn't think they were very righteous, did you? 
But you see, the scribes and the Pharisees kept all the laws. That's what made them righteous. So what makes us righteous? The blood of the Lamb. We must accept the blood of the Lamb as our covering to give us righteousness. We can no longer be righteous by obeying all those laws. Our righteousness is as filthy rags were taught later. We can only be righteous by the blood of the Lamb, by accepting what He did for us on the cross, by believing that He is the Son of God, died, shed his blood for us, rose again, visited around, lots of witnesses, and arose into heaven. If you don't believe it, you will not have righteousness. It will not be the righteousness that surpasses the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. You go ahead and believe all those laws and obey them. But if your righteousness does not surpass the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Your laws will not save you. Go ahead, keep the Sabbath and all the feast days and all the rest of them. But you can't keep one and not keep them all. That's in here. I'll move on. Verse 21, you have heard that the ancients were told, the ancients were told, you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. Or the footnote says, for libel, you will be guilty before the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing. I think in the King James it says Raka. Yeah, you empty head. Raka for Aram Raga. So, you empty head. You fool. You good for nothing. Do you need to repent of that? Sometimes we call people a name. They may not hear it, but you're still saying it. Shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And that's, this says literally the Sanhedrin. But our court is in heaven. For God the Father and Jesus Christ is the judge. And they hear and know everything. They know everything we say and everything we think. And everything we do cannot be hidden and whoever says you fool shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell now that is some strong language brothers and sisters are you guilty of calling people names therefore if you are presenting your offering at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother. And then come and present your offering. I had to do that when I first started reading the Bible. I read that and I said, Oh my goodness, so-and-so is mad at me for something. I need to go talk to her. And it was a bad something. Mm-hmm. And I went and talked to her. She said she forgave me. Make friends quickly with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way so that your opponent may not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Truly I say to you, 
you will not come out of there until you have paid up the last cent or literally quadrons equaling two mites uh, one sixty-fourth of a daily wage two mites is not very much one sixty-fourth of a daily wage remember the widow who gave two mites and God made sure that story got put into the Word of God the Bible he wanted us to realize what it means to him for you to give your last five dollars to someone who needs it you have heard it you have you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery that was the Old Testament law but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart if your right eye makes you stumble tear it out and throw it from you for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell now that's a hard statement I don't think he means it literally but whatever it is you're seeing that you're letting into your eye gate if it's your computer use it's better for you to get rid of that computer get into your word and pray listen to music pray and get into your word forget the computer think about it if your right hand makes you stumble cut it off and throw it from you for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell what is it your right hand is doing it's it's a metaphor for you to think about what do you need to get rid of it was said whoever sends his wife away let him give her a certificate of divorce okay here's another here's another one of their laws it's not in the Ten Commandments whoever sends his wife away let him give her a certificate of divorce that's in all caps but I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife except for the reason of unchastity or you know where she slept around or whatever makes her commit adultery makes her commit adultery and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery so now that makes me wonder you know my husbands were unfaithful to me so I thought it, it, I had biblical reason to divorce them and then I went ahead and remarried so was I guilty of adultery I used to think not I used to think I had biblical reasons to divorce and therefore I can remarry this is something you'd have to take up with the Lord but right now we need to be thinking about marrying Jesus he should be your number one he should be the one you're focused on the hour is late and even thinking about marrying somebody else you may be engaged and have a wedding date set and I'm not saying that's wrong I'm not I just pray that Jesus is your number one love again you have heard that the ancients were told you shall not make false vows 
but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. Now that's not one of the Ten Commandments either. And let me read the footnotes. Again, you have heard that the ancients, or it was said to the ancients, uh, you and your are singular here. You, okay. You or your, you people, shall not break your vows, but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord, or oaths, whatever oaths you make, or vows to the Lord. But I say to you, make no oath at all. Excuse me. Either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet. It's not a spinning globe. And by the way, people say, well, that's not a salvation issue. But there is video on here where a man talks about because someone convinced him that the earth was flat and used scripture to prove it, that turned him back to God and got him saved. So I do believe it is a salvation issue because it proves that the earth, I mean, that the, that the word of God is truth. I'll move on. For by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet. Or do not make an oath by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head. Like, I swear by my head. <laughs> Whatever. For you cannot make one hair, white or black. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond these is of evil. So back then, they were able to take oaths. But now Jesus is saying no, no oaths, no vows. You just say yes or no. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Remember all those laws talked about if you accidentally, your animal kills your neighbor's animal, you must provide him with another one okay this is basically what it's saying there's a lot of those if you do this you do that now if you kill his animal on purpose I uh, forget what the law was for that it was a worse punishment you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but I say to you do not resist an evil person but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. We're to go above and beyond. It's, these are our good works that we're to do. This is just some of them. That others may see our light so shine that they know we're different, we're peculiar, and that we love the Lord. So if you sue me for my shirt, you can have my coat too. That's what it's saying. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. I learned what that meant pastor I was under at the Assemblies of God Church, I believe it was, taught us that back in those days, the Roman soldiers were allowed to jerk you out of your house and force you to carry their stuff for a mile. Jesus was saying, whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Say, I'll gladly carry your things. I'll take them an extra mile. And they'll look at you like you're weird. See, we don't do those things anymore. But, you know, nobody forces us to carry their stuff for a mile. But that it's the principle of the matter. If they ask you to 
hey, could you help me dig uh, some of these post holes for my new fence? Stay and help them dig them all. That's what he's saying. Whatever it is. Give to him who asks of you. And do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? See, they were considered really evil people. Yet Jesus called one of them to be one of his apostles. I think it was Matthew. Which could be why he, he used this. Or the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, you know, told him to write that one down. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? See, remember, the Gentiles were not part of the picture yet until Jesus died. And they, he called Paul into the ministry. The last verse, verse 48. Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. How do we be perfect? How do we do all this stuff? How do we keep from not ever being angry? We can't. He knew it. That's why when he died and provision was made for our sins to be forgiven, past, present, and future. All we have to do is ask. He says later, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So if you've got sins in your, on your slate, so to speak, Ask for forgiveness. Get your slate cleaned up. Make sure your garments are pressed and your vessel is full of oil. Okay? All right, I pray that if you need any of this, you'll see it in time. And yes, I know, it's, it's, it's just a blessed hope. I'm hoping that we're going home today or tomorrow because some are saying the 22nd and it could be later in the day it could be tomorrow because I don't know what watch it could be the third watch it could be the fourth watch see that's why Jesus said no man knows the day or the hour he made that clear and I know full well exactly that he said that already Okay, so with that, I'm going to say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Oh, and my shirt says Jesus saves. I put this one on because I wanted to say, yes, Jesus saves, but he's also a righteous judge. Don't forget that. Don't be found lacking Find you, let him find you with your slate cleaned off and all these other things I said. Be forgiven for them and be found doing. All right. Now I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and over each and every one of you and all of your devices. And with that, I will say bye for now. I will talk to you later. I hope it's in person. I surely do.